God says in the book of Malachi, He says, I am the Lord that changeth not. The word tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of my words will pass away. God has put His word above His name. He did not change it in the heavens for the angels rebel against Him. He did not change it for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He did not change it for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And certainly today and forever, He will not change His word. For whatever He has said, He's going to bring about. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I welcome you to the program, The Unchangeable God. It is always a pleasure to come into your home as you open up your heart to listen to what the, the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I want you to know this, that we have an adversary. He is the devil. And Jesus made it very clear. He says, the devil cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It is the intention of Jesus to give you abundant life. A life that you would walk in victory, overcoming the principles of the world. However, there are so many promises that Jesus has promised you that you can inherit now and inherit in the hereafter. But you must become an overcomer. Amen. If you're not an overcomer, you just cannot receive the promises of the inheritance of God. What Jesus is saying to you today, I want you to be an overcomer. I have done everything possible for you to become an overcomer, walking in this world as an overcomer and receiving the inheritance. But to do that, you must walk in the power of the Spirit. To do that, you must receive Jesus in your life and allow Him to make you an overcomer based on what He has done for you. We have a wonderful session this morning. If you want to really live an overcoming life, I want you to listen to this message. Amen. God bless you as you open your heart to do that. I'm reading from Revelation chapter 21 from verse 5 to 8. And the Bible tells us, And he, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst at the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned, burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. I want to talk a little bit on the promises to the overcomer. Remember that, the promises to the overcomer. Remember the scripture says in Revelation, he says, he that overcome shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The Bible closes with a great outburst of hope for everyone, and great promises especially to those who have overcome Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. An overcomer is one who subdue and live a life of victory in the struggles, trials, and troubles that are in this world. Amen. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he heard a great voice saying, I am Alpha on Omega, the first and the last. He says, and what you see, 
And what you heard, I want you to write in a book and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. What we see in the scripture, there are seven promises to the overcomer. And there are many promises that God has given to us that we can have that promise now and even after we die. We have greater promise that is to come, but it must come from one who has overcome. Amen. So to the church at Ephesus, he says, He that hath an heir, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. To him that overcome it will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. He who can hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, for this is of great importance. If you can hear, then hear. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Hear what the Lord is saying now. You need to ask God to give you the air to hear. Amen. The physical here, air cannot hear what the Spirit of God is saying because the natural man cannot understand the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. We need to have a spiritual air to understand the things of God. And so we need to ask God. God gave us a spiritual ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us now, what the Holy Spirit is saying to us based on the scripture, what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do, we need to hear. So if you have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. But he's saying to the overcomer, he said, to him that overcome it will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise. That's what he's saying. To him that overcome it or live a conquering life on the earth who gain the victory over the evils of the world, I promise you that I will give you to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of, of the paradise of God. It is the tree that will give you spiritual and eternal life. It is the water of life. It is the bread of life that you will partake of it throughout eternity. Then he went on to say to the church at Smyrna, went on to say the same thing. I think it's of great importance. He that had an heir, let him hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to the churches. He's saying to you on a personal level and he's saying he's talking to you on, from the church level. He say, he that overcome it shall not be hurt at the second death. The second death removes the soul from the presence of God, from the joy and pleasures of God Almighty and heaven and to be cast out into the lake of fire forever and ever. The promise is, is to the overcomer that Jesus will save us from the second death. So if you're an overcomer, you will not, uh, you'll be safe from the second death and safe from the pits of hell. And may I say this to you, that hell was not created for you. Hell was created for the devil and the fallen angels. People go to hell because they refuse to believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And to the church at Pergamos, same thing he says, he that had an heir, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. To him that overcome it, will I give to eat the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. To him that overcome it, you'll be hearing me saying that uh, all the time throughout the sermon, to him that overcome it, you will partake of true spiritual food. Amen. The food that will nourish your soul forever and ever. It is called angel food. It is called the corn of heaven. Hallelujah. You will receive a white, white stone with a new name on it. 
This is the divine favor of Almighty God. And to be totally free from the guilt of sin, this is what God promises you unless you, is you only going to get it unless uh, when you become an overcomer. Amen. So he says to the church at Thyatira, and he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I receive of my father, I will give you the morning star. He that had an heir, let him hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to the churches. The overcomer will receive power to reign in the kingdom of God, Amen. to rule over nations. Jesus is the bright and morning star, and so Jesus is going to become our inheritance. There is a, an, a, an inheritance for all overcomers. And let me say that Jesus cannot lie. God cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. If he lies, then he ceases to be the God that he says he is. And so he is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. Whatever he says, he is going to bring to pass. And so if he promised to uh, the overcomer all these promises now and um, even after we die, you are sure if you keep the faith until the end, certainly you will inherit it and be blessed with all the promises that he uh, promised us. Amen. Then he says to the church at Sardis, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. The overcomer shall be clothed with the garment of righteousness. That God is going to clothe Jesus' righteousness in us. His name or our name or the overcomer name will not be blotted out of the book of life or the book of remembrance where God takes record of everyone who will go into or have eternal life and spend the life with him in eternity. So God keep records of all those who receive eternal life. He says, I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will keep it if you are a, an overcomer. To the church at Philadelphia, he says, To him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write him a new name to the overcomer. He promised to make a monumental pillar in the temple of our God. It is the promise for the overcomer. To the church at loud this year, he says, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit, uh, to, to sit with me, grant him to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down, uh, down with my father in his throne. To, the, to him that overcometh, Jesus promised to share in the kingdom, to become joint heir together with him in the kingdom of God. And then he went on to say again, those who have an heir, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And I say that so many times this morning. Hear what God is saying. Don't turn that station off. I want you to listen what God is saying because God loves you so much, did everything for you so that you can become an overcomer so that you can inherit the promises that God have laid down in the Scripture for you. The inheritance of the Christian conqueror is first to inherit God and then he will inherit all things. The first thing that you want to become an overcomer is to inherit God. Let Christ dwell in your hearts and that's where the glory is going to come and so Christ is going to make you victorious. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That means to say, let Christ come and reign and rule in your life because you cannot become an overcomer by your own power or by your own 
own wisdom or by your own ability. It has to be not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord God Almighty, that he's going to give you the Holy Spirit that is going to dwell in your hearts so that you can walk above and not beneath, and you can walk on top and not below. You can walk as a conquering person, overcoming person, because of the Jesus that lives in you. So I believe in my heart, I believe more than all the promises that God will give to the overcomer. There's something more than the promises that God has given to the overcomer. I believe in my heart that God wants to be a father to us. More than anything else, while the promises are good and everybody wants the promise, but I believe God wants more than that. He wants, uh, he wants uh, you to be a son and he becomes a father to you. It's a father-son or a family relationship. I believe this is the heart of God. He wants all of us to become one with him, living together as one family, that he wants to have a real personal intimate relationship relationship with us. I believe that's the, the heart of God more than the promises of God. And if we can inherit God in our lives and God becomes an inheritance to us, then I believe we can have all the promises uh, that he have laid down in the scripture for us. Amen. I want to remind you this. These promises are not for everyone. Even though we can quote the promises how much you want, these promises are not for everyone, but only for those who overcome. Amen. He that in his whole life comes forth as a victor conqueror, it is to him the great promises are given. Therefore, as the church I'm talking today, you must become an overcomer because the promises you will not inherit if you don't become an overcomer. It is either the world overcomes you or you overcome the world. It is living in the world and not of the world that is going to give you the victory. It is about mastery over the world or being a slave to the world. And God didn't call us to become a slave to the world. God didn't call us to become a, a, a stay in bondage uh, with the enemy, Satan. God called us to walk in victory. And he had provided every single thing for us that we can walk in victory and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the power to overcome and live in victory lies, or victory in the world lies in Jesus, lies in the power of the Spirit, lies in the power and the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ. It lies in the wisdom and knowledge of Almighty God. That's where we're going to find the power to overcome. Jesus said in John chapter 16 and verse 33, he said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace in the world. He shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He's saying, I have overcome the world. Jesus is saying, you and I will have trouble in this world. We will not be exempted from the troubles and trials and the problems in this world. We certainly have to face them. And we must face them not in your own ability, not in your own power. You will always uh, lose the, 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 the battle. You must face them in the power of Jesus Christ that comes from him. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us from them all. Many do not want to face the troubles of life, but it is through the troubles of life, my friend, we can know that God is able to solve them. It is uh, through the troubles of life, our faith is going to grow. It is, we will know that God is able to do it and our faith is going to grow. For the Bible tells us it is through the troubles of life that God shows up. He's a present help in the time of our trouble. The part of the Christian walk is not easy. It's not an easy one. The scripture tells us with much tribulation, we must enter the kingdom of God. So it's not going to be an easy part. Sometimes we hear that Christianity is an easy. It is a serious warfare. It is a serious fight. And we must totally depend on God to make it to the end. The Christian part is sometimes spoken of a conflict. 
and sometimes as a contest. However, in the midst of the pathway, or sometimes it's like a race, or sometimes a fight, sometimes as a struggle, and sometimes as a contest. However, in the midst of the path, we hear the words of the apostle Paul saying, he says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who loves us. It is not a fight without a victory. It is not a conflict without success. It is not a race without reaching the goal. It is not a struggle that ends in defeat of the contender. We already have the victory. All we got to do is listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. We need to be of good courage and trust in the Lord God Almighty and lean not unto your own understanding. For he says, and put the word into your spirit, he says, be of good cheer. Be happy. Don't worry about anything. I have overcome the world for you. The Christian life is a warfare against sin. It's a warfare against Satan. It's a warfare against the world, against the flesh. But it is not enough just engage in warfare. We must fight to an end. We must fight with the power and the name of Jesus. For he who endureth unto the end is the same shall be saved. Amen. When Jesus said, I have overcome the world, what does he mean? The world doesn't mean here the universe or the created physical world. It is not talking about the created human race. It means the sinful elements of life which is manifested in the corrupt nature of man that actually comes from Satan who influenced that into the world. So Jesus is saying in the scripture in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 17, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is going to pass away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hallelujah. Now, what did Jesus overcame? The Bible talks about the world. It consists of what? The lust of the flesh. The sinful desires, that is, of a man are manifested so he would understand what is the lust of the flesh. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, you would see the lust of the flesh manifested in adultery, in fornication, and uncleanliness, in lasciviousness, and idolatry, and witchcraft, and hatred, and strife, and sedition, and heresies, and envies, and murders, and drunkenness, and revelings, and such like of which the, of which I tell you before as I told you also in the time past that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God they that do such things they are not overcomers of the world the world have overcome them and Jesus said I don't want you to be overcome by the world you must overcome the world to inherit the promises that I promise you now and hereafter and therefore I, I say to you if you receive Jesus in your life and say, I want to be an overcomer for the world have overcome me all my life. I want to overcome the, the world and it must come by the power that comes from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It is very clear what the flesh is and they that live in the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They are condemned and will never be an overcomer. The Bible tells us there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Holy Spirit. Let me say that one more time. He says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That is Jesus living and dwelling in you. You walk in by his wisdom, by his power. And then, then of course, the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you together with Jesus and and the Holy Spirit, you will not be condemned because you'll be walking and overcoming life and certainly you will have the promise of Almighty God that he promises us. Then the Bible tells us what is in the world, the lust of the eyes. This is the sin of covetousness, of greediness. It is having and not being satisfied. 
craving for more and more inside of you can never ever be satisfied. We have to overcome that kind of a, a lust and desire inside of you. Then it talks about what is in the world today. The pride of life, the boasting of life and boasting about what you have, trusting in your own self and not in God is all about you. Now I know that you have listened to me and you have listened very carefully. This is not an easy sermon. This is a sermon for you. You are, have been living a defeated life all your life. In bondage, just cannot come out of it. It seems as though that you are in a box. And everything that you try in life is not just working. It is because you don't know how and how to overcome. But I am saying to the listen again, the words that Jesus is saying. You've got to be an overcomer. How are you going to overcome? When you have faith in Jesus, when you believe in him, he said, I will give you the Holy Spirit. Every single day and every single moment, you're going to walk as an overcomer. You're going to walk in victory over a situation that surrounds you. If you would do that now, my friend, and say, I want to become an overcomer. I've always been in bondage, living defeated lives. If you would say, I want to be an overcomer, because the fact is that you will never receive any inheritance, uh, uh, any promises that God has promised to us, if you do not receive Jesus in your life. And I'm saying to you now, and I'm asking you now, do you really want to become an overcomer? And I'm talking to Christians, and I'm talking to those who are non-Christians. You want to become an overcomer? overcomer then receive Jesus in your life now and believe what he says in the scripture that it is true that he that overcometh certainly you're going to have you're going to inherit all things everything not some things but all things you must be an overcomer you when you receive Jesus in your life and believe what he says he's going to give you the Holy Spirit that's why he cried out many times when he would finish speaking in parables he says those of an air let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying because it is of utmost importance that you hear what God is saying today if you want to be an overcomer Come on, I want you to say this prayer after me. Father, I need Jesus in my life. I need you, Lord, because I've been living a defeated life, living in, in a box, God, that I can't even come out. I've tried everything, but now I receive you, Lord, into my life. I believe in you. I believe in what the, what the Word says this morning. Give me now the Holy Spirit that I can be born of God. If I'm born of God, then certainly I am going to live an overcoming life. I receive you now. Send me the Holy Spirit that I can live a victorious life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and see you next time.